Sunday night, Bury in Lancashire, one of her old haunts, where Lisa Nandy has come to address Labour supporters. Well, this is this is my home turf, Bury. This is I where know. I went to college, so um, I'm going to be on better. Better be behavior. good then. Well, better be good, <laughs> and better hope that they don't have any stories about me, right? Yeah. Well, if they have, can, can you pass them <laughs> on? You know. I'll send them out there. Cheers. Burry also claims Robert Peel, the 19th century statesman who founded the modern Conservative Party. Now, Robert Peel is regarded as one of Britain's great prime ministers. And Lisa Nandy is hoping one day to follow in his footsteps. This is the Michael Crick Report for Mail Plus. Lisa Nandy's family is steeped in politics and journalism. Her maternal grandfather was Frank Byers, a Liberal MP in the late 40s, who ended up as party leader in the Lords. And I think you would agree with me that uh, three or four million Liberals in this country, to be only represented by six members of Parliament, is not really a fair share. But Nandi is half Indian through her father, Deepak Nandi, a Marxist academic who was prime author of the 1976 Race Relations Act. Her stepfather, Ray Fitzwalter, was editor of the World in Action programme at the North West ITV station, Granada, where her mother was also a top editor. When Lisa was growing up, yeah. did she ever show any signs of being a big politician? Yes. Yes. What sort of thing? Well, it runs in the family. My dad was a politician. I know. Her father was, at that point, making, well, setting up the Equal Opportunities Commission. Yeah. And so it's always been political family. And she came out canvassing with me when she was about six. So, Could yes. she say she wanted to go into politics and yes. be leader of the party? And Not leader of the party necessarily, but she wanted to change the world. That's all you're getting from me, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa Nandy was educated here at Parswood High School, a state comprehensive in South Manchester, then went on to a sixth form college in Bury and Newcastle University, where she read politics. And while at Newcastle, she worked on the student paper, where one of her projects was especially interesting. Lisa's personal photo casebook, and one week for a laugh, she describes looking for a boyfriend. I'm never going there again. His willy was the smallest I've ever seen. I'm going back on the pole. Then she ends up naked in bed with a woman. Ooh, I thought you only had your ears pierced, Lisa Nandy says. There are no fit men at this university, she finally laments. Ten years later, after working for a Labour MP and for the Children's Society, she's an MP herself. To win a safe Labour seat at the age of only 30 was quite an achievement. And for the last 10 years, Lisa Nandy has been spoken of as a possible future leader. In the 2016 EU referendum, she voted Remain. But Wigan didn't. Round here, people voted almost two to one to leave. Reflecting views in Northern Labour seats like Wigan, Nandy worked with Theresa May in search of a softer Brexit deal. Well, Theresa May was open to negotiations. She phoned me, she phoned lots of those people who were not ardent remainers. Uh, she, was, she, she would have almost accepted anything. So the Labour Party missed an opportunity and Lisa recognised uh, that there was an opportunity there and tried to do her best for both the country and, and the Labour Party. In Bury on Sunday, almost 200 came to hear her pitch. Most seemed impressed. She knows, she knows what she's talking about, yeah. yeah I think she's very experiment. passionate, and it, it came across that she's very passionate. Everything she said was backed up with an idea that she'd seen working in practice or she'd got a plan for how to do it. Last week, they'd seen Keir Starmer. He doesn't seem to have the same warmth. Lisa has warmth. Then into the cold, she emerged herself. Patriotism's quite a strong theme of yours, isn't it? I mean, what, what does it mean to you, patriotism? Just, I think if you want to um, 
lead this country, then you have to love it. And uh, people have to know that about you and that you have to be proud of our strengths as well as honest about our weaknesses. But I think what we've done too often is talk about the past when actually people Do want to know what the vision is for the future. you think you've appeared unpatriotic? I think that there have been times when people have felt that we're not rooting for the country. Like the Salisbury uh, poisonings? Well, uh, I said in a speech uh, the other week that I thought that we'd called it wrong on Russia because we gave the impression that we were standing with the Russian government rather than the Russian people. Would Lisa Nandy press the nuclear button? I would, um, but I would have to question why any Prime Minister would be so thoroughly useless that they'd got to the point where... Well, they sometimes had no world events left. are way beyond you, even if you're Prime Minister. Well, and, and the honest answer is I would, because keeping the country safe is the first duty of any Prime Minister. But I think we can do better than that. Do you see yourself as a... a not, we can barely see him there, as a Robert Peel. Uh, well, there are some obvious differences between me and Robert Peel. Well, you're both Peel. from Bury, aren't you? Well, he was actually born here, you weren't. But, but uh... this is true. <laughs> I was born in Manchester. Thanks, thanks very much for the shout-out. If there are any Labour Party members in Manchester who want to vote for me, feel free to claim me as your own. Um, I mean, he was, he, was, he was one of those people who went out and saw the world as it should be, not as it is. And that's what Labour has to do, and that's what we do best. And we've done some of that in recent years, but we haven't won the argument and that's why I say don't steady the ship, up our game, we can win this. So who knows, the road back is steep but it may not have to be long and we could be back in power in four years' time. Really? Four years? Well, not like you to be cynical, is it? But yes, we could. But we've got a big job of work to do first to win the public's trust back. Without sweeping generalisations, Lisa Nandy's biggest weakness may be many people simply don't know her even on the streets of her own Wigan seat. Lisa Lisa, Lisa Nandy. Lisa Nandy. Have you heard of her? No. Do you live here in Wigan? I live in Wigan, I live in Platt Ridge. Oh, right, she's uh, the MP for uh, well, she never Wigan. Heard of her. We're making a little film about Lisa Nandy. What do you think of her? I don't know who Lisa Nandy is. You don't? She's your MP. Do you live in Wigan? Yeah. She's your MP. Oh, I didn't know that. All right, so she's not made much of an impact for you then? No. <laughs> She's not got no charisma. She's not got no charisma? No. <laughs> that means she hasn't got any charisma, <laughs> yes. Any... Well, that's wi Wigan talk, that. <laughs> but uh, no, of, of, of them all, I don't feel like uh, there's anyone who's standing out who, who hits you in the eye. Well, I, I think she's all right, Lisa. She's straightforward. Because she's trying to become Labour leader. She is, yeah. She'll be better than Corbyn. Right now, Lisa Nandy is still an outsider against the main two, Keir Starmer and Rebecca Long-Bailey. But she's obviously presenting herself as the compromise candidate, hoping to pick up people's second preferences. And with more than nine weeks to go in this contest, a lot could change.